There is no freedom without struggle. There is no freedom without sacrifice. The words of Morgan Changarai. At 58, this leading Zimbabwean politician knows a thing or two about what it means to struggle and sacrifice. He's been arrested, beaten, tortured, survived at least three assassination attempts, charged multiple times with treason, and hundreds of his followers kidnapped, tortured, and killed. So it has been quite an extraordinary uh, experience. Many accuse this man, Robert Mugabe, the president of Zimbabwe, and his followers of orchestrating much of Changarai's woes. Mugabe is Africa's oldest president. He has ruled Zimbabwe with an iron fist for 30 years. Foreign Policy magazine ranked him this month the world's second worst dictator behind North Korea's leader, Kim Jong-il. I'll be honest with you, I, I, I'm heartbroken when I see what's happened in Zimbabwe. President Barack Obama spoke out recently about Mugabe's leadership. I'm just going to be very blunt. Uh, he, I, don't, I do not see him serving his people well. Um, and the abuses, the human rights abuses, the, the violence that's been perpetrated against opposition leaders, uh, I think, is, is terrible. Can you, can you describe your relationship with President Robert Mugabe? Well, I think, I think it's not just... Uh, uh, it is an evolving relationship. Despite being beaten and arrested by Mugabe's men, Changarai joined forces with his longtime political foe in 2009 to form a coalition government. The goal was to bring to an end years of a violent political rivalry between the two men. Sir, you became Prime Minister of Zimbabwe on February 11th, 2009. What has it been like for you personally? Extraordinary. Because never before have we had a, a coalition government. And a coalition government coming out of a very polarized situation. And economically, the country was in dire straits. It, it defies description. I think we've seen what is arguably the worst hyperinflation that uh, any country has ever heard. A staggering multi-trillion, that's right, multi-trillion percent hyperinflation that destroyed the currency. One U.S. dollar got you the equivalent of 25 million Zimbabwean dollars. The inflation was so bad, the government was forced to print a 100 trillion dollar note. On the streets, people thought Zimbabwe was finished. It was horrible. People lost money, there were no jobs, no food. Everything was closed. Shops, hospitals, it was terrible. But now, 18 months later, a different Zimbabwe is emerging. Tick Miller's Cafe in the capital city of Harare, for instance. The restaurant opened just a few weeks ago. Business has been humming ever since. Unbelievable. Uh, we've had an amazing response from people, an almost overwhelming response, actually. Kelly says people's confidence in the economy is slowly returning. One key reason, the political climate has stabilized and people are beginning to have some faith in the future again. Another big factor is the currency. The coalition government abandoned the Zimbabwean dollar for the U.S. dollar and South African rand. Epfania Ruchanka runs a small stand in the capital city's main market. Changing over to the U.S. dollar and South African rand has made a huge difference. It has stabilized the economy. The streets are bustling, the stores are full again, foreign investors are slowly coming back, Press Freedom is also making a comeback. Trevor Ngube is a successful Zimbabwean media mogul. In June, he launched the first independent daily newspaper in seven years, breaking a state monopoly set up by President Mugabe. It's been the most exciting thing I've done in 20 years, undoubtedly. Human rights abuses are down, although critics say there are still too many, and tourists are coming back to take in the spectacular views of Victoria Falls and the numerous wildlife parks. Today, tourism in Zimbabwe is a huge money-making business. In fact, it, uh, it is number three in terms of generating income for the country. Uh, and, and the government is, in essence, trying to tell the rest of the world that, that this is a safe country and they should uh, all come and pay a visit to cubs like these two guys. Zimbabweans say these successes are in part because the unity government has managed to survive this law. You use the word miraculous. I mean, were you expecting your unity government not to last this long? Well, I think everyone did not give us even two weeks. 
But the road ahead is going to be rough. Unemployment is at a staggering 90 percent, and the country still suffers from an image problem. People have been killed because of their political differences, and those, those images still linger. Yes, that is the past. That image will not go away. Yes, there may be eruptions of violence here and there, but certainly to expect this country to be degenerating like any other African banana republic where people are fighting in the streets and guns are shooting all over the place, like in Somalia, it's far, far away from that image. 18 months after Zimbabwe's unity government was sworn in, there is concern that not enough is being done to fix the country. Despite the power-sharing agreement between the political parties, some are openly beginning to question whether Prime Minister Morgan Changarai has the ability to run the government. I think the truth is that uh, Robert Mugabe is still in charge of Zimbabwe, supported by the military, supported by the intelligence and, uh, and the police force. Yet Changarai is hopeful about Zimbabwe's prospects. This is a country where the future cannot be brighter. You are optimistic. I'm optimistic the future of the country is assured. George Thomas, CBN News, Harare, Zimbabwe.